Hey guys, it's Maria. Welcome back to my channel. I post videos every single Thursday giving you guys the best tips and tools for being more effective in your practice sessions and helping you achieve your musical goals. So if you're new, consider subscribing. This week we're finishing the audition series off strong with a video on mindset. In previous videos I walked you guys through your live auditions, recorded auditions, and interviews, and if you haven't seen those videos they'll be linked up here and in the description box, but the truth is none of that matters unless you have the right mindset. And as with anything else you want to accomplish, um, it's 20% strategy and 80% mindset. So let's get straight into the video so you can make sure your mind is in the right place when you're playing your live audition or recording or even in your interview. I think you'll find some nuggets in this one. Let's get into it. So the first tip I'm going to give you is embrace imperfection. You have to keep in mind that mistakes are not just normal, but they're expected. And there has never been a performance in the history of ever that doesn't have mistakes. And it's a different story whether your mistakes are heard by the audience or not. And trust me, with more and more experience, you'll be able to hide them better and get out of them better. But musicians make mistakes, who would have known? And I've noticed a lot of younger musicians uh, place these expectations on themselves that they have to be perfect. And while that's a great mentality to have in the practice room uh, because it makes you more picky and a better practicer, it doesn't put you in a good place when you are performing or recording because the moment you make that first mistake, it's game over. It's better to just shrug those mistakes off and keep focusing on what's important, what's next. There's already so much pressure put on you in this one day or in these few days if you're recording, um, don't make it even worse by telling yourself you have to be perfect. Instead, come from a place of curiosity with the intention of learning from the experience and you'll find that you will play better as well. And when I made the switch, I found myself asking questions like, hmm, I wonder what will go wrong today? Not in a scared way, but in a curious way, like what problems will I have to solve today? What will I have to wriggle my way out of today? And that really took the pressure off me as the performer and gave me more of a role of being a problem solver. The second thing you have to remember is chances are you're not gonna be playing at 100%. It's just not gonna happen, I'm sorry. And it's actually gonna be closer to 80%. There is no way you can nail all of those difficult passages and show every single side of you that you wanted to when you only get one try or a limited amount of tries um, in a recording, although you have more chances to do it in a recording. Just think of it logically. When you're in the practice room and you finally get it right and you're like, oh, I got it right in the practice room. Why didn't it happen in the performance? How many tries did that take when you were in the practice room? And you weren't even playing the piece from beginning to end. Maybe you were just practicing that one section that's difficult. You tried a few times and you got it. If you just sat down, gave yourself one try, um, would it be as perfect? Chances are absolutely not. So why are you putting that pressure on yourself in a performance? Going back to the first thing I said, mistakes will be made and that's okay. Be nicer to yourself and be understanding of the fact that this is a nerve-wracking experience. You will be nervous and you only have one try. Unless you're recording, in which case you get more than one try, but it's still not unlimited tries. So go easy on yourself. My second point is know your worth. Trust yourself. You've put in the time and effort into learning and perfecting these pieces and nothing can take that away from you. That's here to stay. You've put hundreds, if not thousands of hours of work into this repertoire, into forming these habits, forming your muscle memory, and that's not gonna go away just by being nervous. Your preparedness will show, no matter how nervous you are, how shaky your hands might be, or whatever else you're worried about. When I realized this for myself, it took the pressure off me again as the performer, and I realized that I've worked for months to be here, and I owe it to myself to enjoy this performance instead of dreading it or trying to make it perfect. So just ride the momentum that you've created over these months of hard work and you'll be okay. All that being said, I'm assuming that you did practice enough and you are ready for this performance because, well, if you're not, then that's a lesson to be learned too and you will benefit from that little reality check. But in any case, it's not a good idea to start thinking about whether or not you practice enough the day of your performance. Uh, what's done is done, good or bad, and you just have to make the best of the situation you're in. The second thing you have to remember is that in that moment, 
during your live audition, during your recording time, you are an artist making beautiful music. You're not a student trying to do everything their teacher told them to do. You're not an aspiring artist. You're not an aspiring musician trying to make something beautiful. No, you are an artist making beautiful music. You have your own unique voice, your own interpretation, your take on this repertoire, and you're sharing it with your listeners. Forget those stylistically correct details and limitations that you and or your teacher put on your performance. Forget those slurs that you want to bring out on the second page of the third movement and just focus on making beautiful music. It sounds so simple and that's why I love it. Instead of telling yourself that you have to nail that passage or they have to like my interpretation, all you're telling yourself is that you have to go out there and make beautiful music. And this piggybacks off what I said at the beginning, which is mistakes are fine. Mistakes actually don't make or break a musical performance. As long as you channel your emotions and really show your musical side, that's all that matters. Thirdly, remember that you are impressive. The work you put into learning and perfecting your pieces is impressive. Auditioning at music school is impressive. Giving a performance is impressive. Give yourself credit. A more conceited way to say this would be they're lucky to hear you play. And I cringe when I say this because I've been given this advice by my colleagues and teachers so many times and I just was never able to internalize it, at least not in that wording because I felt like I was putting myself on a pedestal compared to my listeners. But there is some truth to that and some benefit to thinking that way, especially when all eyes and all the pressure is on you. Just remind yourself that you deserve to be here today and you have something to say. You don't necessarily have to take it to that level of stuck up, but having the confidence to know that you're playing something worth listening to can really help when you're feeling nervous. Going back to my previous point, you put in the dedication and the work and now you have this beautiful piece of music that you are sharing with your listeners. My next point is knowing where to focus. So let's start with the basics. Don't focus on the notes, focus on the emotions. How many times have you heard that one? This is actually rooted in the way you practice. If you're practicing and the only thing that's on your mind is which finger you wanna use next or which note is next, and you never actually took a step back to think about what you want to say emotionally with this piece, or at the very least how it makes you feel, then it's gonna be harder to make that switch the day of your performance. But generally, music makes us feel a certain way, right? And when you're nervous, everything gets amplified. Emotions are high, adrenaline is high, and so what you have to do is channel that towards whatever emotions you want to convey in your piece. And playing with emotion on stage is good for many reasons, but let's just talk about two of them. First, you will get those musicality points, of course, when you play with musicality and expression, who would have thought? But the second one is you're actually gonna be making less mistakes because instead of focusing on what you did wrong, dwelling on what happened a few bars ago, you're gonna be in the moment working on making whatever you're playing right now beautiful and you really can't lose when you have that mindset. Next, keep your brain ahead of your hands. Now, I don't mean pages and pages ahead. In fact, that can be disastrous. Don't try that for the first time in performance. Make sure you try that in the practice room if you want to. I mean, it's not very good, but I'm talking about um, a few notes or a few bars ahead of where you're playing. And a good analogy for this is when you're walking, biking, driving, doesn't matter. When you're doing these things, you're always looking ahead. Um, even when you're walking and your head is down, uh, you're still looking a meter or two ahead of where your foot is currently. And that's because you're looking for things not to step on, people not to run into, right? And when you're driving, same thing, you always have to keep a space between your car and the car in front of you in case they suddenly stop or something else happens. And the same thing in a performance. You always have to leave a buffer for in case anything goes wrong. And this can be the difference between being able to get out of a sticky situation and not being able to get out of a sticky situation. So some good questions to ask yourself in the practice room, because this takes practice, are if I miss a note, 
will that throw me off? Will I know where to go next? Or if I miss a chord, um, will I be okay to go on or will that be the end of it? The next thing is don't evaluate yourself. Don't grade yourself. Oh, I'm playing so badly right now. Oh, was that better than how I played yesterday? What will they think of my performance? All of these questions are just distracting you from playing your best. Trust the process. Trust your teacher. Trust yourself. Don't grade yourself. There are people already doing that. That job's taken. That's not your job. Your job is to focus on playing your best in the moment. And the same thing applies for recordings, in case you were wondering, because when you are playing and recording yourself, uh, it's your job to play your best. Afterwards, yes, you're gonna listen to yourself and pick the best recording, but not both jobs at the same time. So whether you're playing a live audition, live performance, or you're recording yourself, this applies. Don't give yourself a grade. And the last thing to remember is to have fun. This is an experience that most people will never get to have in their lives. So you can choose to dread it or you can learn from it. And my advice to you would be to treat it as an experiment. Be curious, use it to learn more about yourself your tendencies, your weak spots, your thought patterns, so you can do better next time, the time after that, and become a more experienced performer overall. Each performance will give you more and more wisdom and you'll become a better musician because of it. So enjoy it. And as a general rule, be hard on yourself in the practice room, but go easy on yourself in a performance. So that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any more questions or requests about music school auditions, be sure to leave them in the comments. I read every single one of your guys' comments. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, and if you want to watch some more of my videos, you can do that right here. Bye, guys.